the accommodation uh, as a person that never gets sick to get walking pneumonia. I didn't even know this was a thing, so getting on a plane wasn't really an option. I'm in Victoria, British Columbia, and um, I'm really grateful. I've, I love Montreal so much. When I tell people about Canada and the States, I'm always like, you have to go to Montreal. And I'm sure the streets were insane last night, because go Raptors. Wow, what a nail lighter game that was. Uh, today I'm really excited to, to join you folks to talk about uh, living the dream is a big thing. Working from home is a big thing. And I gave a presentation uh, in Austin a couple years ago when remote work was just really becoming a thing. And it's interesting now that remote work has become so prevalent, uh, it's actually kind of intense sometimes. And that's what this presentation is to talk about. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Let's see here. Can everybody see my screen OK? Yep. Yes. Awesome. Okay, yes. wonderful. I can see you up here as well. So, so welcome again. Um, this is exciting to be here, even though I'm not there. So I love you all. We'll go ahead and get started. So first off, as mentioned, I'm Anne Stefanik. I'm the founder and CEO of Canopy Studios. Uh, we really build, design, and support websites for clients that want to make an impact. And we take care of the whole life cycle of the website. So we believe the first day your website goes live is the first day of your project because then the world gets to see you. So I'm curious, of the folks that are there, how many of you already work from home? Okay. Three quarters of the room. <laughs> and, uh, or how many people are thinking of maybe making the jump? Three, yeah. Three, four. So, yeah, so you know, some people think I'd give anything to work from home. It must be so relaxing. <laughs> You get to work from anywhere. You have a really flexible schedule. You, of course you get to wear whatever you want. Yeah. But really? <laughs> it's all kind of isolating. Working from home and not a social, a lot of social interaction can be kind of lonely. It's always motivating. <laughs> working from home can also be physically damaging if you're not moving around as much as when you have to commute or work in an office. It's also stressful sometimes to work from home. What's kind of interesting is that this attention economy that we live in has made work intense. And the attention economy means workload is up. And there's this expectation of real-time responses. When I was doing this research, I found this very fascinating that us as service professionals, 94% of us put in 50 plus hours a week with nearly half of that group clocking 65 hours a week. Doesn't include the phones after all that. That's us. And as part of this attention economy, we don't really get uninterrupted time. Our phones are on from the time we wake up till the time we go to bed. Interestingly enough, from the State of Life Work Balance report that I investigated was that 40% of knowledge workers never get more than 30 minutes of straight and interrupted time. And it's interesting because it's well established that um, it's almost impossible for like except for 1 to 2% of the population to multitask. Most of us try to spend our days bouncing from task to task or, and or try to make up lost time by multitasking, but it's not really very effective. Did you know on average we use 56 apps and websites every day and switch between them over 300? And another weird thing is that this is weird badge of honor to work long hours and lose sleep. And the funny thing is, is that when we pass a certain threshold of working hours, our, start, our, our, so our sleep starts to become impaired. We're more likely to feel depressed and stressed. We can have a hard time communicating, collaborating, and getting things done. Yet people are proud of this. But what's the most scary to me is that stress is transferable. If anybody's had bad boss, they know that their life generally, like, it just goes down, right? And they can take that stress everywhere they go. So stress is transferable from boss to staff, from staff to staff, to staff to clients, you know, from taking and taking, from staff to eat home. So 
without too much more doomsday stuff, because it's kind of scary out there, the state of life-work balance. When doing this research, you know, workers are getting less than three hours of productive time a day. 21% of their days is spent on like social media, news, and yet 28% of us start their day before 38, 8.30, many of the people starting before 7 a.m. 40% of us use our computers after 10 p.m. And 26% of our work, one quarter of our work is done outside of normal working hours. Valerie, I'm sure you picked up some weekends that you've had to get stuff done. And this, and these two are kind of scary, is that we check instant message on average every six minutes. And since 41% of our day is about multitasking, no wonder it feels intense at work. So, and this is whether you're in the office or at home, when you're at home, some of this stuff is really compounded. So let's stop for a moment, people. This is impressive. What we want to do is we all want to have a calm and happy day at work. So happiness is not a matter of intensity, but of balance and order and rhythm and harmony. I love this quote because we can't keep going to be happy. We actually have to find that balance and order and the rhythm and harmony. So I found that, you know, as growing a remote team, how the heck do we create that? So really when it comes to work, it's a two-sided, it's a two-way mission. So each, the both the employee and the company needs to stand together and, and connect to make this happen. So I'm gonna go through both. So as an employee, I asked all my staff, here, I'm gonna give this remote presentation. What are some good tips and tricks? The first one, I love this one. Hands are optional. And then always get dressed. To get up and no, it's not an option not to wear pants. You always have to wear pants or skirts or anything. But the point is that getting up, getting dressed is obviously a very good thing to start your day at work. It's very basic, but it's true. Another thing is structuring time for lunch. Uh, it's really important. I noticed that some new employees that start work remote with us is we encourage them to put an hour lunch time and check out and go outside. And you know, we have this thing that I'm like, I like to take a hundred steps after eating because it feels great. So you know, pack a lunch, make a lunch, make sure you take a lunch and get outside. We also found that it's important to create workspace time and boundaries. So for example, I use my iPad for my nighttime stuff. I'm not, not going to be totally unplugged, but it's nice to not have Gmail and Slack and all those things plugged into that. You know, often it's a place where, you know, I, I live part-time in San Francisco. My living room is my office, so I have got one of those Japanese divider boards and I stick out in front of my desk so I don't see it on the weekends. You know, there's lots of ways to create space. You can also create space in your, in your head by using the Pomodoro technique. If you're feeling overwhelmed, it's a really great place to start to say 25 minutes at a time. The Pomodoro technique is where you focus for 25 minutes at a time and then you take a break. So this is very helpful if you are feeling very pulled all over the place. Also when you work remote, you, you need good Wi-Fi. I think a lot of people underestimate this when they're first starting to work remote. Uh, if you're planning to travel and go somewhere, check the Wi-Fi first. Even ask them to send you a speed test. Because sometimes they'll be like, oh yeah, our internet's great, you can totally work from here. And you get there, and you can't, and then it's very stressful. And that does not make a calm day at work when you can't get online. You also find that when you work from home, creating rituals and bookending your days is a great way to create some space. For me, it's a morning walk with my dogs and an evening walk with the dogs uh, to create space from work. I have a bunch of my crew that gets dressed and walks to Starbucks and gets their coffee from a Starbucks every day. Um, or Tim Hortons, right? There's lots of different options. Wait, they can go off to school and then they know when they get back, they're, they're grounded and focused. So finding some ritual routine. Oh, and I have to say, I really love working at home because I have dogs. They're both amazing little distractor factors where they do encourage me to get outside. Uh, if, you, if it's not possible to get a dog, I would definitely, we have a great channel at uh, Camping Studios and it's called our Fitness and Health Channel. And that we, step up, we set up stepping challenges with each other. So there's an app called Stride Kick that allows like um, the Fitbits and the Garmins and the Apple Watches all to be synced on the same schedule and you can create little competitions. So we have a work week hustle. So that's always fun to see how other people are doing in the office. 
and stretching. Stretching is so underrated these days. We were really getting out and stretching. And I mean, one of the basic stretches that computer nerds like us can do, and it's easy, is forward fold. It's one of the most powerful yoga stretches. And it's, it's, it's really easy. You can even do it sitting on your couch, put your legs out straight, and just let go, lean over. If you're tight like me, you probably won't go very far anyways, so you'll be able to watch your program and then you'll be relaxing. So, you know, hand yoga. We do a lot of, you know, computer stuff. Stretching on our wrists is a great way. You can always do different types of hand yoga. Great way to wait for the coffee to brew, do some stretching. It's amazing what the body feels when we move a little bit. And this is really interesting. Is I found that creating some life work balance made cutting screen time. So I love a powerful female speaker named Mel Robbins. Love her. Definitely recommend reading all of her books. Um, but what I love about her is the phone is one of your most, uh, your worst productivity and happiness killer. If you cut the screen time, you take control of your life. One thing she had taught me was to not sleep with it in my room. I mean, as a CEO, putting away my phone is kind of scary sometimes, but really what it helps, it helped me take back my time. So I turn off my phone a good three hours before I go to sleep. I read, or I meal prep, or I play with the dogs, or I play with the harp. Like, I just try not to have the screen time, and boy, do I feel a lot better. The other thing that I found was that as busy people, and we probably, some of us have kids or obligations and so forth, often the only quiet time is in the morning. So sometimes it's time to take that time for yourself. You know, there's a really cool philosophy um, that I've been practicing, which is 20-20-20, which is 20 minutes of exercise, 20 minutes of meditation, and 20 minutes of learning. So it's helped me really feel inspired because I love learning, but sometimes I'm stuck in the grind of running a web agency, and i got to get to work every morning, and when I get off of work, the last thing I want to do is open up a book because I'm tired. So right first thing in the morning, I do 20 minutes of it. Wow, has that been inspiring for my life? So finding time for you in the morning really will start your day off right. And you're an evening person though. So sometimes it's when everything quiet down, the kids are asleep, the chair chores are done, but this is not a time to work, this is a time for you. So finding time to turn, tune out and to turning inwards will really give you time to process things that are going on and then you can take on the day with a clear head. And sleep heals. If you're a manager, definitely encourage your team to get offline if you see them online. If you're a night owl, make sure you sleep in. Don't try to take 7 a.m. calls and hurt yourself. If you're a morning person, get to bed early. You're going to love it. Your brain feels good. You're going to feel. And I love the meditation is medication. I'm the worst at staying still, and technology is like my life. But just there is apps out there that can help you. There's a cool app that's totally free called Stop, Breathe, Think. And what I love about it is you go on, this is how you feeling today. Eh, man, I don't feel very good. I kind of have this sickness and I'm feeling kind of you know, excited about this presentation, but maybe a little anxious about talking remote. And then it gave me a five minute meditation that would help me be grounded and tuned into me. So there's technology out there that can help us be calm. So. It's pretty cool. Simple habits, another one, calm. But I like stop breathing because it's free. So pivoting on to company and leadership. Uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about that. So first off, culture is clutch. When, when talking about culture, you know, really it comes from living your values. And living your values is something that you, it, it kind of is a magical thing where you co-create this together. So, we really work on operationalizing our values. And we have six values at Canopy Studios. And what we do is we have an app called Hey Taco. Has anybody heard of Hey Taco before? No. Oh, it's so fun. If you take nothing away from this presentation, it's like not very expensive. I'm sure every boss will, will go for it. It used to be free, but it's not free anymore. It's like $5 per user per month or something. It's not too bad. But the point is, is that we can operationalize our values by giving away tacos in gratitude for those things. <laughs> so for, for us, we really value clarity. 
in all of our projects, whether we're working with each other, our clients, or anybody, we value clarity. So if someone does a really great job at providing some technical documentation in a really easy to use, easy to digest format, the team might be like, hey, here's a taco, great report, or Sometimes you need to run on human connection, being we're better together. So when we do stuff and it shows that team connection, that team movement, we can give away tacos. So this is so cool. So this Hey Taco, oops, where'd it go? The Hey Taco here is just becomes like a Slack chat where you can give tacos. I installed it and I thought, hey, nobody's gonna use this. Well, everybody loves these tacos. And it's become part of our culture. And it's allowed us to operationalize our values. And I think as a company leader, you have to build that culture by the people. The people have to build the culture, which means that they are the ones that are contributing. So, it's also, I feel, really important about knowing our why. And in order to be happy at work, working for an organization that has a clear why is really helpful for everybody to rally around. Has, do you folks work care? Where guys, where they would all like have their different unique identities, and then they would have their hearts, and they would all go, and they would be fighting, and they would be, you know, doing whatever they. And they would have this hair care bear stare, which I feel like, you know, is so important for when you're building a company, creating a sense of unity where everybody has that care bear stare, bringing their own heart and energy to their work, and that's why Canopy exists. Like we exist to support humans in every way, we support our clients by giving them great work. So they can be successful online, Canopy serves to support its employees so they can be successful in their own work and home lives. And because we do much more than just like build websites, you have to support them, we focus on the whole life cycle. You know, that means that all of our employees are engaged for, for creating an amazing web experience the day you go live and onwards. So it's kind of fun that people know our, our meeting. And as a leader, to create a culture where it can be calm, means that you need to lead with radical candor. And radical candor means it's important to be direct and honest without offending. It's not mean, it's clear. And Brene Brown, as a lovely leader, she does a lot of leadership training, and one of her things is called clear as kind. So as a leader, when you're building a company or you have a boss, you know, radical candor means you don't sugarcoat stuff. Don't no pretend it's better than it is. Give them exactly what they are. Also, really, really, really just test the sandwich. You know, the, the good, the bad, the good. Because by now, we're all very smart, intelligent humans. We can smell that from a mile away, and it ruins the good stuff. Because every time we hear something good, we're expecting the bad stuff to follow. So say it as it is, clear as kind. Find a mediate, find a way to go forward and move forward. I also believe in you know, real-time real -time feedback. We killed our annual performance review in favor of quarterly meetings that do we align with our values and the project that we're working on, did we accomplish the goals of the project? So it's not this like mysterious day that you're gonna show up and all of a sudden you, you, you and everybody can be knows where they stand. And I believe that all employees are happy because they know where they stand, which sometimes things are hard, but we work through it. You know, real-time feedback is something that um, is so important. I can't stress it enough. And I think so many bosses are afraid to have the conversation when things are tough. But when you don't have those tough conversations, it can breed a sense of all of, all of the things. Because often, what is the most scary thing is that a lot of humans feel shame, especially the really smart ones, <laughs> and especially the perfectionists. And sometimes when we screw things up, we're scared to kind of ask for help or our bosses are afraid to deal with it because it's a lot of emotion. So having a culture where you can actually give feedback, real-time feedback both ways, creates a sense of purpose in building stuff together. And it's okay that we screw up, but it's important that we talk about it as soon as it happens. And of course, this is the collaborative part. Uh, building a great organization where you have the ability to run a remote company and be happy means that everybody has to take the time to listen. We have to create space to be able to create connection. You know, as, as a lot of people say, well, what do you, what, how, do you, how, do you, how do you folks hang out? You know, just like this. We got on Zoom. There was like 35 of us on the Partridge Family type thing just a minute ago for our all hands. And 
You know, we're doing a talent show at work. So sometimes we just do silly stuff together. But you know, in order to have that, you need to have a leadership that can be able to really listen and create the space for things to be brought up. Here's another cool tool that I would recommend. Um, as, as, a, as a growing organization, it's sometimes hard to get to know everybody. And we use a tool called Know Your Team. And Know Your Team is great. It asks three questions, one on Monday, one on Wednesday, and one on Friday. And usually they're open-ended questions. Sometimes they're yes or no. The first one we ask is on Monday is really it's just, how was your weekend? We use Geekbot for project updates. We have all this project stuff for scrums. And, but this is more of like, who's our team? So getting to know what we did on the weekend gets to know each other because we don't have those office cooler chats. So having that weekly heartbeat come in. And then the Wednesday is kind of more of the company question. So it is something like, you know, if we're doing a new program or if we're going to, you know, um, I asked a question about like, hey, I'm doing this remote talk. What are your best top tips? And then Fridays are social questions where it's, it's questions like, you know, what was your favorite food as a kid? Or what is the one thing that uh, um, you don't like that the rest of the world does? You'd be surprised how many people said Game of Thrones. I don't like it. Right? So, you know, Getting to learn your team um, as both from a manager and peer perspective means that in a remote culture, you need to create the pathways and the tools to be able to do that. And this one's a really affordable tool. And another thing is, is like in a, in a place where that promotes a sense of calm means encouraging good work ethic. So when you're talking about people, uh, when you're talking about working with people, you know, it's like, did they do what they say they were going to do? Did they put in a fair day's work? Do they respect their customers, coworkers, and peers? You know, are they fundamentally a good person? That's good work ethic. Working evenings, working weekends, um, you know, that is not good work ethic. That promotes a sense of the craziness. We went around Slack to say Slack was originally meant to be a bit of an asynchronous tool, that you could put something there and you could come back to it. But now there's this demand for real-time responses. So we created a new Slack policy to help people understand the expectations around responding in, in real time. Because you need that focus time. If you remember back to that original time, if you only get three hours of focus work a day and they're in 30-minute increments, eh, that sounds awful. So carve out your time, own your time, and then you know, as managers, encouraging good work ethic is like, wow, I'm really excited how much um, how much work that you effort and time that you put into this because you're able to focus versus thanks for multitasking on this while you're on a call. Because managers that push for people to multitask when they're on a call means they're crap tasking. They're not doing either very well. So as managers, it's a, it's a really interesting opportunity to create space and recognize good work. Employees who are consistently and meaningfully recognized at their work are 11 times more likely to spend their career within a single company. I'm sure y'all know Lullabot. I love Lullabot. They have about 50 employees and they, nobody leaves. Nobody leaves. Right? It's one of those fancy golf courses that everybody loves to be at and you know, nobody leaves. It's like, that's, that's, that's really cool because they recognize great work and they create a culture and they create peace and they create calm. And I feel like right now, in such an attention-driven economy where we're being, you know, we're being pinged all over the place, we can create space in our heads and in our communities by helping each other and by creating a positive culture where we're getting away from pushing around on um, working after hours or over-resourcing so people feel like they have to multitask. One of the things that I did is I lost control of my calendar. Everybody could just book meetings everywhere, anytime. And what happened was, is I never got any time to myself, and it was like, I was literally waking up at 4.30 in the morning so I could work from five till seven in the morning Pacific, so I could get on calls starting at seven in the morning to finish my last call at six. Ugh. Now I don't take calls before 10 a.m. and I don't take calls after 2 p.m. Boom, you got four hours with me and I take an hour for lunch. Oh, we only have three? Oh well, we'll make it happen. Because there's an interesting thing. Have you folks heard of the Parkinson's law? Where humans 
will fit in. So for example, if I'm given three weeks to write a blog post, how long will it take me? Three weeks. <laughs> weeks. Three weeks. If I'm given three days to write the same blog post, how long will it take me? Three days. So think about your schedule in your life that way. If you are a morning person, you like to focus, tell your manager, make it work, say, I'm not gonna take off before noon. I love y'all, but I need to focus. And I can do a great job if I get this done. So carving out time for yourself to focus will give you the time to be able to be responsive. And then you can say, hey, I'm gonna be available on Slack from you know, one o'clock to three o'clock and I'll be there to do all the things and stuff or create a daily scrum. There's lots of ways that you can match communications because I think this expectation of real-time response is so intense that we drop everything to find a file for someone and that person doesn't need that file right away. And we are all over the place. So. I'm a big fan of celebrating your wins. We always start every call with what's your win and then we go into our stuff. Sometimes it's hard to always talk personal stuff at work because we're busy and you know, we're meeting a meeting. As a remote worker, I'm sure as you all have noticed, you don't get up and move very often because you don't have commute times between meetings anymore. So we start with a one minute win. Hey, my win today was we closed this deal or hey, my win today was that I got this patch fixed and it's all done. And then we go into our day. We're also big fans of throwing tantrums. So having a culture that creates and values open communication means that it's important for people to share their failures. And when people can come to the table and be like, wow, this was really hard and this really sucked and I don't know what I'm doing here. And when you feel, you have that culture where it's okay to seek ideas from each other, this magical thing called synergy happens and all of a sudden you've got all these great ideas and you feel supported and you know that you're not alone and wow. You know, I, how many people here have taken their Acquia certification exam? When? How many people failed their first time? <laughs> oh, that's good. But how many failed the first time? They're so many of those years. They just made tests. It's okay. The best part about that was we all got together, we all got notes, we all worked on this, we had study sessions, and boom, they all passed the next time. But instead of like, you know, the three people that passed, the three people that didn't, that didn't pass, it was like, oh, let's get this, let's let's dig into this together. So it's important to create a space where it's okay to fail. Because we will, because open source development is hard. Drupal is hard, right? It's fun, it's cool, but it's hard. And so we have this thing that, you know, every day we do our scrums, and on Thursdays, the team gets to throw the And it's not about each other, and it's not about a client, or it's never evil or nasty in that way, but sometimes we can get really mad at some hosting situations where we're very frustrated with why this patch solar configuration is working here and not there, you know, or sometimes it's like, I'm really frustrated with um, whatever they've got going in life, but it creates space. Have the feedback things. So, third time is kind of fun. But it is time to be happy, happy and calm at work. So I do want to thank you all so much for uh, joining me remotely to talk about how to live and work remotely and be happy. Happy to take some questions now, because I left about 15 minutes for questions and conversation. We can talk about tools, we can talk about process, we can talk about culture. Um, but thank you for listening to the main presentation. So. Okay, and I'll post my slides with the, all the resources. Um, I would recommend this awesome book called It Doesn't Have to Be Crazy at Work. It's by um, uh, BFF, he's the, he built Basecamp, he's like the founder of Rails. He's kind of like the dreams of the Rails world. Um, but he, he writes this book with his partner and they're a 20 year old mature product company, a little different than the agency space, but really good read. Awesome. Anyone, questions? The resources of these slides. Uh, they asked if you could go back to the resources they slide, they slide, but uh, you'll be providing the slides, right? I'll provide the slides right after this. You know about that? Yeah, so the slides will be provided. I uh, yeah. will try to maybe. Yeah, go in here too. Yeah, maybe uh, we could put a random poll. Somebody have a question? Go for it. What are the five apps that you can't live without? Oh, yes, okay. I have to say that as a remote worker, my phone is the, is the app. <laughs> Dictation is my friend. 
I am a, I love writing emails by talking to my phone, saving them in draft, and going to my computer and finishing them. So that's one productivity hack that I found was really helpful, was actually just going into my mail from there and talking to my phone. And Siri sometimes has some very interesting suggestions. Drupal is usually triple. I've been trying to train Siri what Drupal is for a very long time. Um, <laughs> You know, but uh, also GitHub, they, she doesn't really understand that word either. Uh, but generally I find that staying connected is Zoom. Zoom is great, Slack is great, uh, big fans of the Hey Taco app, but I couldn't give it enough tacos itself, love that. Um, and I, I would probably say stop, breathe, think has been really powerful for those moments where maybe I'm a little nervous or I'm stressed out or I'm anxious or I'm really excited and I'm having a hard time focusing. So that would probably be, I think that's four or five, but yeah. Awesome. And do you use Trello or Asana when you're working with your team to focus, like doing a job? Yeah. We use teamwork. We use teamwork and teamwork desk because it allows us to handle our support tickets for everybody that's coming in through our support model as well as through project base and allows us to do like Gantt charts and you know all that kind of project management -y stuff. And it has the card view too, so it's helpful. So we do like the Kanban. Uh, we're big fans of the Kanban process, which is the backlog to do in progress and done. I find to-do lists very anxiety producing personally because it's really hard to get to them every day. And it seems like sometimes it grows before it shrinks. You look at the day and you're like, oh, I have a list and nothing got done. That doesn't feel good. So I've been using time uh, where I block in. I find that when you're doing kind of remote work with a bunch of people, it's really important to create some defined collaborative space so that you can come online together uh, and then try to do as much asynchronously as possible. So using tags or automation within you know, Trello or so forth, so if you move it to the board, it automatically triggers that thing. Awesome. I have a question. So since you're a CEO and also working from home, uh, the, the room in here is pretty big and it has other people and half of it probably is working from home and the other half is not. What I hear today from a lot of people was like, oh, my boss doesn't let me work from home. They like everyone in the office. Would you be able to share some, uh, some lines or something like they could use with their boss? Say, hey, I'd like to work from home three days a week. And they say, no, I want you in the office. So what, what would you say to this boss to say, hey, it's fine. They can work from home. Sure, yeah. So trust is a tricky thing, because that starts right at trust. Right? And getting, getting your boss to trust. And they're probably afraid because they lack some type of visibility. So I'm, for those that work in the office, I would recommend a pilot. So there's not a big term commitment. It's like, hey, why don't we do a pilot? And during this pilot, here are some of the things that I will do to create accountability and clarity. So what I will do is, you know, and sometimes it's tricky if you're the only person that wants to work remote um, and there's 200 people that work in-house, you're going to have a bigger battle than if it's a team of 10 and you want to work remote. So kind of navigating your landscape. But I recommend kind of coming up with a bit of a game plan and saying, hey, let's try this for, you know, this week for, or next week for two days a week. And this is what I will do. We'll have a phone call first thing in the morning and I'll explain all the things that I'm doing and then at lunch I'll send you these things. And it's about kind of creating trust and showing that you're still online. I think a lot of people think they're home and not work. So if you say, I'm gonna get this deliverable done by this day, and I think a part of the big things is around why, right? To help them understand that, you know, that that state of life work balance is not necessarily just like for, that's for everything. So if you can say like, I have a harder time to focus at the office because I'm getting pulled into so many different directions that I can be more efficient with this budget if I'm at home working because I can actually focus. Sometimes helping people understand that it will save them money is a weird way to kind of put it, but if you say, hey, if I have 100 hours to this project, it's gonna take me at least 100 in the office because I have to get pulled all over the place. 
Whereas if I can work from home and I can do this over 10 days at eight hours a day each, you know, you might be able to set some kind of like thing up to show them how much more efficient you are. And a pilot allows low commitment. You know, let's just try it out. If it doesn't work, cool. And if it doesn't work, go find a new job. Just find a new job. Find a new job. Thank you. Any questions? More questions? No? Nothing? Okay, and thank you. That was awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Always happy to chat about anything to do with remote work. And as an employee or as an employer, um, I'm on the I'm on the uh, Drupal Slacks too. You can probably find me and DM me there if not on Awesome. I'm really happy to chat. Awesome. And how can we get the link for your presentation so we can get the apps, names, and everything for everyone here? Oh, sure. Why don't I send it to you here right away? Yes. Email me. Or do I post it on the Drupal North website? Yeah. Do you? I think you have access to add it to your presentation, don't you? Okay. I'll upload it right after this meeting. Yes. You can, you can upload it with the link in there. Upload, you can't, but you can put the link and then it will be perfect in there. And then you guys can go back and it will be all there. Awesome. Thank you. And I have a, one suggestion. Always do your presentation remotely. It's the best. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's you all. I was, I was like so excited. I love Montreal. I love Drupal. It's like my two favorite things in one. So. Awesome. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your evening.